Greetings, friends. Welcome to our circle. We continue our work on magnetizing the seed thoughts that would help humanity in building the new civilization focused on the common good, freedom, and brotherhood. We're still working with the energy of the new moon. This time it's new moon in Libra. An interesting astronomical slash astrological event accompanies this new moon with the alignment between Jupiter, Earth, Moon, and Sun. And according to astronomers, this is the closest to Earth and Jupiter come together in the last 60 something years. I cannot remember now from the top of my head. And uh, so it's, as we know from astrology, it's uh, Jupiter gives us beneficent opportunities. And so today we continue our reflection and meditation on the topic that's we focus in this cycle as sun passes from Virgo to Libra. We hold the topic invoking new governance and leadership through triangles of positivity. And today we have opportunity to share more and offer our seeds for thought forms that we will take into our meditation to magnetize and radiate those towards humanity. So let us start our work. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. So we refresh our purpose today as we always do our formulated purpose for this project, which is to support the plan of the spiritual plan, the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet by our group meditation which focuses the power of our joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and Earth's overall planetary life. Which we hope, we intend, will enable the recognition and the manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity. And through which we seek to magnetize thought forms, new thought forms of solution that support practical actions that lead to the spiritual advancement of humanity. So in this month of Libra, as Alexander said, with our topic of invoking new governance and leadership through triangles of positivity, we're working with the air element of the cardinal cross in Libra, and we're using the cardinal cross to explore topic areas that are related to leadership and new governance. 
to help with the cleaning up of the house of politics and religion. So with our theme this month relating to triangles, as we work within the energies of Libra, we can tune into the symbol of Libra, the scales, which expresses the balancing function through the form of the triangle with its two opposing pans and equilibrating fulcrum point in the center. In relation to our theme of new leadership and governance, DK tells us that Libra governs the legal profession and holds the balances between right and wrong, between negative and positive, and also between Occident and Orient. The true and right relationship of this last, Orient and Occident, is to come about through the activity of Libra and the work of the legal profession at some time in the future of humanity. And that's something to focus on. And DK gives us a vision of right relations through law, through the law, which where, where the law is the custodian of a positive righteousness, he says, and not simply an instrument of enforcement, but this custodian function of positive right, righteousness, which supports the growth of the social attitude, which will lead to right relations and the spread of self-control and the growth of unselfishness as the goal of all legal procedures. So let us hold these influences in mind as we come together today within this atmosphere of Libra, this potent atmosphere of Libra augmented as Alexander said, by the presence of Jupiter close to our Earth. And as we begin our group alignment, we'll enter into the naming circle as we hear and sense each other. So over to you, Tracy, to lead us. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, Please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of our group gathered today, as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. 
this is Alexander and I'm calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome. Rebecca. It's Rebecca calling in from the east coast of Australia on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Welcome. Helen. This is Helen calling in from the UK near London. Greetings to everybody. Welcome. Andrea. This is Andrea from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Aneta. This is Aneta from Denmark. Welcome. Barbara. Can you hear me? This is Barbara, Charlotte, North Carolina, US. We can, Barbara. <laughs> welcome. Barclay. I see there's an issue with audio for Barclay. And he's joining from Mexico City in Mexico. Welcome, Barclay. Bernard. Bernard from France. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Francois. Bonjour, Francois from Toronto, Canada. Uh, bonjour à tous. Bonjour. Welcome. Jillian. Hello all, uh, this is Jill from UK. Welcome. John. Greetings, this is John joining from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Chosette. Hello, Josette from uh, Strasbourg in France. Welcome. Judy. Uh, hello, this is Judy Harrison from uh, Brewster, Massachusetts, uh, USA. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, this is Kiki from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, um, this is Lynn. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, Tracy, and thanks to everyone. So we open now our uh, circle for sharing, continuing the sharing that uh, we had uh, during the quarter moon meeting and uh, uh, during the full moon meeting. Just to remind us uh, the questions that uh, Helen offered uh, to us during the full moon meditation where when we invoked the vision and asked for guidance in precipitating ideas related to the topic of the new governance and leadership. And you can see these questions on the screen that they can help us to um, guide our conversation uh, or sharing uh, today not to limit but direct uh, keep us in direction and uh, to start our sharing i want to invite uh, uh i don't know either rebecca or helen to uh read the definitions of governance uh we had this uh, uh very lively conversation right before the beginning of the webinar when Helen asked uh, what is actually the distinction about the governance and leadership and we went to uh, look together for definitions of governance and so uh, we thought it would be nice to open our sharing today by uh, bringing that offering that to the circle definition of governance so, um, Helen or Rebecca, if you'd like to share on that. I think Rebecca had that up, did you, Rebecca? Yes, I do. And I've just pasted it into the impressions board as well, if anyone wants to refer to it a little bit more. And I've also just quickly pasted in a definition of leadership as well as governance. So I'll just read them out. Um, and I'm sure that will be quite stimulating. So, um, and I have pasted the links into the impressions board as well. Um, and so one definition is of governance is that governance encompasses the system by which an organization is controlled and operates and the mechanisms by which it and its people are held to account. Ethics, risk management, compliance, and administration are all elements of governance. Um, and then um, there's just some a dictionary definition. To make and administer the public policy and affairs of a state, for example, exercise sovereign authority over um, and then it says to control the speed or magnitude of to regulate to control the actions or behavior of. so a lot of a lot about control in there um, and i think it's interesting that um in that vision that um dk gave us of the function of the law, um, it speaks about um, the social attitude and the relationship of the social attitude to the spread of self-control among humanity. Um, and now here's a definition of lead. To guide on a way, especially by going in advance. To direct on a course or in a direction, to serve as a channel for, to go through, as in lead a quiet life, to direct the operations, activity, or performance of, 
as in to lead an orchestra, to have charge of, as in lead a campaign, to suggest the answer by leading questions in council. So um, not a um, desired thing in the law to ask leading questions. And these are less legal um, to go to the head of a parade, to be the first in or among the league, to have a margin over one's opponent. Thank you, Rebecca. So the floor is open. Please unmute yourself if you would like to share. Or if you're muted by organizers, just raise your hand. I would like to say that having heard those definitions, I think it's it's a good thing that we're looking for new governance and new leadership and new ideas may seem uh, very much from um, the outside, don't they? Not coming from from within and and self. Ah, uh, what's the word? Self-governance, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, th I thought they were they were interesting, and they were a lot harder. I, I mean, in, in their their quality than I I thought they would be. So this idea of new governance and new leadership seems now to me particularly relevant. This is Anette from Denmark. Um, what comes to mind is um, this triangle um, of govern government. I, I don't really know if I can find the English words, but uh, the, the lawgiver, the, the government, and uh, the second one is, is the... the um, the police, the the, the ones who um, uh, find so, um, uh, who who serves to to uh, um, so that we can uphold this law, and then. The third point is the judge, the, the judge, um, uh, if, if, uh, if you know what I mean, I, I don't really um, can, can find the, the English words. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is uh, Judy. Um, I have been uh, pondering this and thinking about this uh, for a while now. And what I realize is that the thought form behind the governance structures that we have and the way we are in the world um, needs to be shifted so that uh, there has to be a spiritual basis on which governance and leadership are built. And the thought form of the one life and the idea of uh, the right human relations is not the basis of the thought forms on which governance and leadership is built. 
and that in some ways it really is our job to help seed the idea of a new thought form uh, to base governance, which is the structure and leadership, which are the workers and the quality that they carry, um, they have to resonate to a higher uh, thought form than they do now for there to be real change. So it, it is soul that needs to lead. It is consciousness that has to happen on that next level for um, the shift to be made in right governance and right leadership. Thank you. This is the Nede uh, from Denmark again. Um, I uh, think about the, the 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 same thing that I said last time that the new governments uh, have to be a mixture of uh, the the former first ray, but also of second ray, uh, because we have to have this. Um, uh, consciousness and soul ray with us, as you said, uh, and I totally agree with that. And I th also think about um, um, England, and and they had first and second ray, um, and all the Commonwealth uh, countries, uh, they have. Um, had and and they have uh, brought um they have used their first ray personality to get in power but they have also left behind a government that is still a help in in these uh, countries today uh, with uh, um um a court and uh, a government that is ruling today, um, and with with um, um, uh, most of it, uh, it is uh, governed uh, good uh, today. So, a mixture of first and second ray is what I think we we need um, in the future. Thank you. Josette, friends, I found uh, particularly interesting to say that the function of a government is to serve and uh, serving to offer a channel. Thank you. Um, regarding uh, human consciousness, which I think needs to alter along with the times to help bring in the new governments, uh, I did put a piece in the uh, impressions board, but for anyone who hasn't read it, I'll just quickly read it out. Um, and one type of human consciousness of the triangle, one type of triangle affects the masses of men and one affects aspirants, disciples, and initiates. The first leads to self-consciousness, and the other results in more rapid stimulation towards initiation. And an important triangle to bring in this human consciousness is Aries, Leo, and Virgo. <clears throat> they potently aid, this triangle potently aids in inaugurating the new age. Aries sets in motion the courses that will produce the new age, involving the trend of all the new movements in the formulation of the various world orders, in the discoveries of science and in the emergence of the new types in the different kingdoms of nature. Leo has been involved in stimulating the vast number of people who have and are achieving the integration of the personality and becoming self-conscious as well as in the emergence of thousands of self-conscious world aspirants, gradually support, subordinating their integrated personalities to the good of the group. 
Virgo appears in the many religious, spiritual and mental organizations and movements, which indicate so directly the awakening of the Christ consciousness in humanity. Um, I took that from Esoteric Astrology, page 485, 486, and that's not word for word. Thank you. Thanks, Julian, and I um, remind you, everyone that's in the um, pasted into the impressions board as well as in that Julian. Um, and I see Andrea has her hand up. What struck me so much about that definition of governance was the constant use of control, 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 control. And that is such a Piscean concept and probably even in advance of the Piscean concept of selfish hierarchical leadership, which immediately puts some at the highest level and some at the lowest and voiceless level. And I think as it has been indicated already that, that the Aquarian law will have to come from a from a very deep place of selfless sacrifice um, based on, as was said, the spiritual basis of harmlessness and respect. And ultimately that is the Christ consciousness that will come into play and bring that right human relationship. Yes, indeed, this question about the meaning of the, the word of governance opened up a whole new dimension for me as well as I started looking into that. And this uh, note of uh, control and discipline uh, made me think of this uh, differences uh, of leadership or who sh uh, le uh, leader who leads through inspiration um, and uh, shows the vision and yes in its essence those are two different modalities of I'm trying to find the third point that would bring together governance and leadership. Uh, and yet we live in the transition period. And who knows for how many more centuries this transition period will be when uh, the human society will be going undergoing transformation. And uh, in a way we need will for quite a long time we'll need both of those. We will need the system of uh, that would help us collectively to uh, maintain certain level of discipline and organization, and especially considering the seventh ray coming into force, the organization, and uh, and yet to have that new type of new modality of uh, governance which lead through the vision where the aspect of consciousness come into focus and as each of us individually it's like a it's a uh, soul working through limitation of the physical body uh, we uh, the same uh, humanity all together yes we more and more will be aspiring to work and function as soul conscious humanity and yet having limitations of the physical reality and so uh, what I thought that's in a way uh, hierarchy works as a, uh, as a through leading not through governing 
and the task ahead of us uh, is to develop a system of effective cell governance individually like as a discipline as disciple who self-imposes certain discipline and as communities who self-organizes and self-governs and uh, further on uh, governing relations of uh, between the nations and finding the way how to address global challenges together by subordinating ourselves to certain organizational international discipline Yeah, the uh, definitions being read were were a plus for um, for me, uh, and I got out of it. Um, I think I think it was Jillian that said the uh, a lot of the discipline and control and the different things they were talking about and how we're coming out of the Piscean age and and it's interesting how. Um, it's playing out eso, um, exoterically in, um, you know, the discipline and control that these governments, it's almost like they're reaching for their last, um, I don't want to say hoopla, but they're, they're really trying to put it out there. And it um, started with the COVID um, type thing where they started the lockdowns and the keeping the kids from going to school and this and that. So we're seeing how the Piscean age exoterically, um, the results from what that discipline and control did uh, a couple of years later, right now, we're seeing the devastation that it did to families, to the kids and their schoolwork and the, um, you know, the suicide rates in the younger children and everything. So we're seeing um, exoterically that the discipline and control type of leadership is not working. It will not work anymore. Um, it's humanity isn't isn't at that point anymore. We've we've elevated to a higher uh, place where it made me think of the truckers that got together peacefully in Canada and formed a camaraderie again, a brotherhood. So. Um, it's going to be the groups that are going to teach how to be leaders and um, in, in government and in, uh, in law and in whatever. Um, but like the Aquarian age is all about the groups and we're seeing how it's the groups of people, not the leadership that's in charge is actually starting to manifest itself, uh, showing the positive aspect of group work and being together. Uh, and maybe the leaders, if they're smart, will look at what these groups of people, whether they're parents or truckers or more medical people or whatever, um, these different groups are starting to show um, the intelligence because there's so many different aspects of leadership, uh, leaders in, in community, whether it be for teachers or teaching the children or whether it be for medical or for government, for law, you know, what's legal and, and, and uh, to com combat the lawlessness that uh, that's going on, that type of thing. So I found that to be really interesting. Thank you. This is Lynn. Um, um, in terms of um, ma you know making these things ha or helping these things to actually happen around us, I think 
um, we, I, I feel really challenged by um, dealing with the different levels of consciousness and knowing what's appropriate to support the different levels of consciousness. Um, and I think it takes quite a bit of detachment um, to try to um, recognize that. Uh, and different, different people have different needs for leadership and governance. Um, as, as in raising children, uh, you don't expect the same um, level of re individual responsibility of a two-year-old as you would a five-year-old or as you would a 16-year-old or a 21-year-old. Or a, or a it, it all changes. And um, I feel really challenged by the idea of trying to be supportive of all these different levels. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. This is Darcy. I've been looking more from the place of race, centers, and esoteric astrology, uh, the rays that govern. In connection to the hierarchy, the central triangle is composed of the Manu, representing loving, intelligent life, the Christ, representing loving, intelligent consciousness, and the Manakohan, representing loving, intelligent activity. So we know that their energies are governing humanity, which represents progressive growth and unfoldment. And in regards to the ashrams, the seven major ashrams are each responsive to one of the seven types of ray energy and are focal points in the hierarchy and the seven rays. So we know that these are guiding and governing humanity. And the central senior major ashram at this time is the repository of the second ray energy as this ray governs this second solar system. It is the ashram of love wisdom in which the Buddha and Christ received their initiations. Its work will be obvious that if the process of invocation and evocation governs the interplay of the planetary centers, you have in this fact another reason why the senior ashram is a second ray. It is now working with the seventh ray coming into prominence. And men begin to demonstrate a responsiveness to the law of integration and personality appeared with all its potentiality for good and evil. Man became an integrated unit in the three worlds. And training and the use of the mind to make contact with the soul. This had never been done before except to a slight degree. It is now being accentuated. And since the time of the Christ, all the seven major ashrams have been fully organized and are steadily increasing in radiatory activity. DK asks us to make note of the order of their appearance under ray activity and to contemplate that they were ray two, seven, four, six, five. Three, one. And in giving us this information, he says, hence, 
at more than you immediately know at this moment. So when I'm looking at governance, I'm looking at race, and then how do we as world servers help to distribute those governing rays into the center of humanity that are helping to facilitate our evolution. These uh, quotes were taken from the seventh ray, revealer of the new age, starting at page 76. Thanks, Darcy. That's interesting because what came to me also was um, each country, of course, and nation uh, has its own ray makeup. And I think um, in the Aquarian age, that will become more relevant um, and more in the forefront so that um, the leadership and gover governance that will occur in, in each of these nations according to their rays um, hopefully we'll be working more with the virtues and uh, the virtues of the rays of their specific ray. And by working with the higher virtues of their rays and working it out through their people, through their leadership, through their government, um, the blending of the rays, the blending of all the nations will then come at a higher uh, spiral type of evolution and um and it will bring a, a more of a harmony throughout the world almost like a, a a note you know bringing all the notes all the keynotes together and then blending them creating this beautiful chord and i think that's probably how in the aquarian age that things are going to start to be working themselves out, these nations will be able to recognize more of what their makeup is and what their, um, their, their uh, things that help them and things that hinder them and they can work themselves out that way, which is gonna happen all the way down to the individual person also during that time. Anyways, thank you. I resonate with what Lynn uh, shared into the uh, group. I think it's a very important uh, rule or principle to, to hold in mind uh, in all the work we, we do in terms of what is the stage of evolution and what uh, the different stage of evolutions require different approaches, the same as the example with the kids, teenagers, and youth. Um, it's uh, one of the uh, rules uh, of healing, actually, is that before healer starts to any work he or she should assess look at the carefully at the person in front of and assess where he or she is in evolutionary path and according to that use different methods of healing so when uh, for us as we work with the thought uh, substance generating ideas and thought forms it's it's an important and 
rule or principle to hold in mind, recognizing what will bring more goods to this or that uh, person, individual or a, a group of uh, people. Um, do they need, in this case, do they need governance or do they need leadership? It seems to me that um, all of the things we've been speaking about would be facilitated uh, by a, just a common basic sense of values. Um, I don't know if that's possible, though, as you said, Tracy, with so many different rays uh, for personality and soul and so forth. But if we, if we just had, uh, and, I, and I know that comes with higher consciousness, there's just a, a sense of what's important and, and a sense of how we treat one another. Um, but I do believe that um, somehow we can evolve a basic sense of values that could be, uh, could work for everyone. Um, I'm not sure what they are yet, but maybe um, um, just basic respect. Um, uh, I know I had I had my first uh, spiritual teacher used to say she was a bit of a character but a wonderful person and she used to say um, um, I love your everlasting soul but that doesn't mean I have to like your diddly personality <laughs> and uh, um, it took us quite it actually takes you pretty far if you can just remember that one thing if we you know that might be a, a place to start um, and then respect, have respect for all, all souls. And to actually, if all humanity could live that out. Um, and and I, I think there are a few basic concepts that would, would aid if we could all, if the world could agree on it. Um, uh, certain things to do with freedom and, um, and having a space, your own space. That you're in control of and uh i don't know i'm going to think about that more what they might be thank you hi it's me um i've been debating whether to bring this up or not but um i think it's yesterday was such a most auspicious day and uh, I know it's not directly related to governance and re leadership that we're discussing, but I think esoterically and exoterically, it's monumental. Um, I don't know if anybody's aware of what happened yesterday, um, that for the first time, uh, man was able to direct celestial objects in space. Um, and the NASA, um, a group of engineers from NASA through a project that they have uh, launched a spacecraft 10 months ago and it reached, it reached its target in the um, outer limits of our solar system. Uh, hitting its target was, uh, it was hitting an asteroid. There was a large asteroid and a small one and they aimed it for the small asteroid. Um, so it directly impacted the asteroid to see, to make it deflect out of its trajectory point. Um, this is huge esoteric, esoteric significance with this going on. And I think Alexandra, Alexander mentioned the alignment, Jupiter, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, which only happens with the Earth and Jupiter every 60 years. And interestingly enough, it occurred during the, full, the new moon cycle in Libra, and the cardinal cross balance and just it was kind of like uh, when man first climbed mount everest so yesterday was an extremely auspicious and significant day in the history of mankind and if we look at 
the small craft going way out and hitting a large body and bring that, you know, the, the correspondence, correspondence to the macrocosm versus the microcosm, we can see how something small, as small as a group or a person can shift and change the trajectory of leadership, government, whatever. But I just, I just felt like that needed to be shared today because it was so amazing for mankind. Something positive. Thank you. I'm interested to hear that, Tracy. I wasn't aware of it. Um, and the thoughts that it brings to mind for me is um, whether humanity is playing God without having the consciousness of God. Um, and, you know, there's been all this talk about space wars and things. So being able to hit objects in space and um, affect their direction and things seems like it could go in many different directions and I guess that brings us back to the the question of how we bring morality into governance what Treating your neighbor as yourself be a little start. It's interesting, Rebecca brought up the word morality because I, I was going to say, I was looking at my notes from the sort of mid moon meeting we had and I was just surprised how many times the word morality came up in our conversation and now Rebecca has brought it up again and I think it it does hold quite a key to many of, of these ideas of governance and leadership and whether they're coming from love and from the heart or are selfish and as always we need to look to ourselves and see where we are coming from in our daily lives. There is um, the the quote that I I um, shared. Uh, I think it was at the quarter moon meeting, and uh, just want to read it again because uh, as I read it a uh, few minutes ago, I realized that it again relates to uh, this relations of governance and leadership in a way, and um, so it's. Um, 
from Dinah to page 142. The disciple as an outpost of the ashram as a functioning soul must be oriented to humanity in a more definite, de definitive manner. The purpose of such orientation is that the life of triangles may penetrate the area of the square and produce the inevitable consequence, consequence, the germinating of ideas and the flowering of the new civilization and culture. So it's this formula that I'm a triangle divine working out that will, higher will, within the square. So it's a uh, in a way it's that relations between the triangle that gives us inspiration of the higher spiritual laws and principles that cosmic harmony trying to express it within the physical plane reality within the square as morality as moral principles and as the systems of governance that's pretty much the 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 the, the work of disciples how to bring the higher to the lower. I think in many ways, uh, what you're saying, Alexander, is quite important because I think we need to look at our role and where we stand as planetary servers how we work with hierarchy, how we bring down those new ideas and those uh, seeds. I mean, 2025 is around the corner when you look at the externalization of the hierarchy. And you, you talk about the Manu, the Mahokohan, the Christ. I mean, that is the governance. How do you bring politic, if you will, Ray One, the new civilization, the new culture, uh, Ray Seven, Ray Three, uh, the Maha Kohen, how do you bring that together into um, a working form? I mean, when, when I look at um, things like uh, the creative labs and working with nations, I look at the group that I'm working with, which is focusing on the United Nations and the countries of the world and uh, seeding what they have in common. There's a lot of things going on, but we have to work um, together with that higher idea and to seed it really into those groups that are ready to run with um, that new idea of working for the one life and the common good. It, it really is not just about nations anymore, but nations working with nations. Everything is really about the law of right relationship and it has to be based on law and it has to be that next new order. Uh, and I think that's what we're doing. We have to understand our own function in this to bring that new idea uh, down into the matters. Thank you. Um, I think uh, governance and leadership from the elders, the um, higher elders, will of course be fine because they understand the needs of everybody. The leadership and governance that we have at present uh, just don't. They and a lot of them just understand themselves and their clique, but they don't understand others. 
Um, for example, our police force uh, tend to ignore some crimes. They don't bother attending like burglaries and things like that because in their eyes, they don't see it as that important. But for the people who are burgled, it is vitally important. So I think uh, that is one thing that really needs to come from leadership and governance, the uh, needs of the differing needs of all people. Thank you. I think it's important to remember too in what I think it was Alexandra said that it's the work of the disciples to bring the higher to the lower, but that we are all on that path, that every human being on the face of this earth is on the path of discipleship at some level. I think we have a real challenge in how to inspire people at various levels. Um, okay, thanks. Just in relation to morality, um, I think in one of the definitions, I'm not looking at it at the moment, but the idea of holding to account was given. And when I think about it, um, my own life and um, some of the things that I witness in my job, um, where which works with people, um, I think some of the most transformative experiences can be when we hold people to account and hold ourselves to account for the consequences of our actions. Um, and uh, it's occurring to me that this seems like a very important part of um, morality. I'm not sure if that's right, but it seems like um, holding to account um, could be a significant part of governance and that that can be done equally across many different levels of evolution, um, but in different ways suited to the different levels. But um, it's a very different um when you feel into it deeply it's a very different approach to some kind of a punitive legal approach where people are punished for doing wrong um it's actually a process of helping us to recognize what has happened because of a decision that we've made or an action that we've taken um, so that seems like a, a valuable thing feed to think about. Yeah, Rebecca, I think um, what we were talking about, the holding to account, I think um, in governments and that it's called checks and balances. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think that's what it's called. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of that going on right now, but it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess because I've been around restorative justice processes, um, there's a whole meaning for holding to account for me, which um, expands so far beyond checks and balances. The checks and balances are possibly the instrument for holding to account. Um, but then the process of holding to account is um, 
can be done in a very, um, I guess, dignified and human way um, where, where those who have made mistakes or deliberately transgressed um, are, are held, held in a way that um, fosters their realisation of harm doing. Um, so it's not only about finding out that people have done something wrong through processes of transparency, but also um, providing processes that allow for the um, change of consciousness through that process of finding out. Yeah, again, I think it falls on leadership. And once we hold accountable the Piscean type leadership, it needs to be the Aquarian leadership that that holds uh, that into, you know, that comes out and brings that into account, um, ending that, you know, might is right and all that type of, uh, you know, type of thing and bringing it more into the common good and brotherhood. And um, again, it goes to rotten leadership, people that are rotten, that are selfish, that are not selfless, um, that are all about control. And, uh, you know, it's, that's why they call it cleaning the house of <laughs> government politics and religion. <laughs> you know, it needs to be cleaned out. Um, bad apples need to be removed so the rest can flourish and be bright and shine when leadership in the united states began in the 17 late 1700s it was a service it it was a service under god that was taken on not as a job that had benefits that came with it, but as a sacrifice to lead for the leadership of a new country. And I think there's something to be said about the change in the job that has occurred of late, particularly in the United States, that it is no longer a service as it was, I think, intended to be, but is in fact ruled by greed and materialism and fear that their job is no more. And so that leads to a series of selfish motives within the governments that they hold. So it's interesting to go back in time and recognize that those initial leaders did it out of a selflessness to some degree for the benefit of all, the we, the people. Hi, this is Barbara. This has been a marvelous conversation and I appreciate everything that everyone has contributed. Um, I wanted to add that, well, one of the thoughts that came to me initially was from our various documents here in the US speaking about of the people, for the people, and by the people, as I think of governance. And thinking again about what Helen and several others have said, that yes, these states and stages of consciousness, governance, governance has to begin within. I mean, this really is the ideal. 
we've heard the wonderful um, things that uh, Alexander shared as far as from Dinah as to the subjective work that we do as a group and from Judy as well. Uh, these are absolute necessities for us to help um, not just seed, but bring, project the energy and the force of those uh, the frequencies to supplant and dispel the old thought forms of, as others have said, might makes right and survival of the fittest and the things that we see happen is happening in governance around the world. But humanity, as I'm looking at it, is both so disillusioned and there's been so much distortion of truth, uh, deliberate and incidental, that a great deal of humanity just doesn't know who or what to believe anymore. So I'd like to read something because it, for me, it's coming down to we, I think we have an understanding of our subjective work and how to begin to apply that and continue to do that as we've been doing for many years. But education seems like an underpinning for all different states and stages of consciousness, including values and morality uh, that has to begin at birth. And I'd like to read a, a, a statement that was given by DK in um, Raise and Initiations, I found that I thought was very important when I think of the need for beginning with children and families and our educational systems, because those are the people who are going to vote for what kind of representation and governance they want, with the exception of those imposed governments that do exist in the world today. So here's what DK said. He said, only the voice of a trained public opinion and the intelligent demand of the masses for right human relations can save the world from chaos. He also talks about educational programs, organizing, organizing um, implementing ways of reaching people at the youngest stages, you know, parents, school systems, et cetera. So when I think of what needs to be done moving forward, where my focus seems to be moving, is both doing the subjective work, working into the mental and emotional astral plane of humanity and those old worn out ideas and habits and patterns that exist, but also the educating how do we approach this in all different fields at the youngest point to the point of action that is taken once people have reached a certain point in their lives or a certain age so that they are bringing with them that value system that reaches out for the greater good, the general welfare, right human relations. And you know where I see it today is I see it in young people, in great masses of young people on this planet who are disciples practically from when they're starting off, uh, when they begin to talk and walk and be active. It's just amazing. And how do we support more of that? Anyway, it's the education side that's really been the exoteric expression of where I think governance is going to begin to shift and transform. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. And 
Thank you, friends. So many threats coming through our conversation and probably this unprecedented proximity of Jupiter to the Earth. We can blame on this expensiveness of our conversation today. We lost a little bit track of time and uh, better later than never I tried to invite Saturn to our work today. Again, we're in Libra, so we need to balance Jupiter with Saturn and let's shift to our meditative work and I invite Rebecca to guide us through the process leading to meditation, which today Helen will take us on again. Oh, as Alexander said, so many threads, and so much richness. So as we prepare this space for Helen to lead us, let us just take a few moments and um, move into silence and open ourselves to receive our own seed thoughts that bring together our precipitation or um, richness, our, our kernels of truth or inspiration from our conversation today. Um, so we'll just take a few minutes um, and during the meditation, Helen will invite us to offer our seed thoughts into the chalice the group chalice. So we'll leave some time now just to connect with that. And Helen, when you're ready, please lead us out of the silence into our meditation work. Let us recognize and acknowledge the whole spiritual community that has been active in this rich conversation. I notice even more nowadays than before how different groups are telepathically picking up similar see the thoughts. We are advised in discipleship in the new age to work like the ashram, using the power of thought, creating thought forms which will make clear-cut contact with other minds and which will bring about definite changes in the consciousness of humanity.
So let us link together within the etheric network, heart to heart, with all the various and varied groups in the new group of world service. Let us link to the great community of fully conscious souls we refer to as hierarchy, governed by the Manu, the Mahakoan, and the Christ. And from there we link to Shambhala, where the will of God is known. And where the Lord of the world, Sanat Kumara, works with the mother of the world, the great Deva Goddess. And thus let us include the Deva community in our alignment with all its connections to all the kingdoms of nature. We hold in our consciousness the great triangle of Shambhala, hierarchy, humanity. Let us sense the example of leadership and governance within this triangle and visualize it penetrating the square of matter. So attuned and aligned, we visualize the glowing beauty of our chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. Let us see its light dissipating the dark clouds of glamour and illusion, which hinder the awakening Christ energies and the building of the new age. In Virgo, the chalice could be seen as a womb of the Virgin, protecting and nurturing the Christ within. In Libra, we can see the chalice as a boat carrying us across the waters. And we understand the importance of keeping perfect balance together as we travel. We invoke the special fire of the spirit of equilibrium to help humanity on its journey and to realize the law of action 
and reaction. Let us open to the triangle of the spirit of equilibrium, the avatar of synthesis, and the Buddha. Now let us connect again with our topic, invoking new governance and leadership through triangles of positivity. And we take a few moments in silence to reflect on all that has been said verbally and telepathically and on our responses. And we allow seed thoughts to crystallize that capture the essence of the threads from the conversation that are meaningful to us. With love, we offer our seeds into the chalice. Each one of us speaking as we feel moved and allowing each seed to rest in the silence for a little while before the next seed is sown. Public opinion 
must be educated in accordance with the spiritual laws and principles. Teach Awaken. civility. Andrea, please. Teach civility and the conduct of right human behavior so to inspire a love enhanced service and leadership. Awaken the true meaning of uh, leadership, freedom, and right relationships. Let all aspiring governors and leaders use wisdom rather than knowledge in their work. Let us look around us in our daily lives for the emerging good um, and the spiritual light that we see manifesting and help to energize that um, even in the people who are struggling and um, have their faults. Let us, let us focus on um, energizing the, uh, the goodness that is, that is being created. The point of balance in world expression is perfected proportion and harmony, both in the life of spirit and the potency of matter. The law of right human relationship needs to be the basis for governance. New Age governance and leadership balances itself within the triangle 
of relevance, malleability, and harmlessness. Encouragement of morality in leadership. So let us now visualize our golden chalice filled with positive triangles and seeds. Allow them to resonate together and then see them radiating out to the world with love and light. May they reach and encourage the hearts and minds of all receptive beings and aid in the manifestation of new governance and leadership in our world. And we seal our meditative work together by sounding the great word of power. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human mind. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out 
and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. And let us all sound three ohms together. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 